here I am. The road to the title. Another title. I'm looking forward to this. I love my geek type. Ah, shit. Singles. Okay. It's singles. Um, I've had the luck of the wheel, I think, in my first two matches, if I'm completely honest. And I'm looking forward to this match. Robert um, is living up to his nickname at the moment because i kind of been sleeping on him. And now I'm seeing where the level he's at now. Had it in Full Metal Teams. And now coming into here. And also in the other Geek Leagues, I'm seeing what he's doing. And it's pretty impressive. So I've got to be prepared. But like I said, the wheel's been kind to me so far. And I think it has been a little bit in this match too. Especially with deep cuts with what's coming up. So I'm just going to play my game. Do what I've got to do. Robert's probably going to win though. So good luck. Well, goddamn, there it is, right? I mean, you can't you can't say anything bad about Joe. He's so nice. He's a good guy. He's great at fandom. But like you said, this is singles. Mm -hmm. It's a little different. More more your realm than his. Uh, you know. Yeah. What, how how are you feeling about it? I, I have nothing bad to say about Joe. I like Joe. I always enjoy it, Joe. Well, according to Joe, we should just pack it in, right? I I heard yeah. that. I heard he kind of just said, "Let's finish this. Yeah. We're done. You get the win. Let's go home." I mean, that would be cool. I kind of need to sleep after having to put in all these hours for these movies. But you can't sleep on anybody. Joe won two matches. He's two and zero, just like I am. That means we're equivalent as far as that's concerned. So I have to take him seriously. Uh, he is right, though. Uh, you know, he did have a bit of luck with the wheel. I had a little, but not really. So. He, Odds being what they are, probabilities and such, they should shift back in my favor, you would think. But even without, I'm still feeling pretty confident. As you should. You should. I mean, Joe's not saying I want to sleep on even in singles. We've seen him in the classics. We've seen him all your stuff. He has made wins. He is good. But I think you have that little bit of edge. And uh, you ready for this? I am ready. All right. Let's roll. Uh, you ready to go, Bar? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the sunglasses are for? Oh, sorry. Five, <laughs> four. Three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Full Metal Singles. We are officially on the road to the title. Two players coming to this, our first match, uh, both desperately trying to get that match with Brian Michaels, our cha singles champion at the end of the summer. And this is their first step into a larger world. Uh, so we have uh, two 2-0 two oh players, uh, Joe uh, Fairley coming in. Starting his uh, singles career off with two wins against two full metal uh, mainstays, Sandy uh, Robinson and Ryan Permison. Uh, Robert coming in, he beat Ryan Payne and Jonathan Caro. So both earning their spot here. Uh, with me is Andrew James Barr. Andrew, what are yep. your thoughts going into this match? Uh, these are two players that everyone has kind of been like keeping their eye on. They've been making their their breakthroughs this season um they've been showing the the talent and the potential that they have this year so it's exciting to see the two of them go up against each other and one of them having to lose yeah that's the bummer both these guys off to a real hot start but only one guy will advance here today and uh let's see who it is we'll bring them in uh starting with uh a record of two wins and zero losses it is joe hot fuzz fairly And his opponent. What's up, Joe? Good, and his opponent, also with a record of two wins and zero losses, representing Fun DMC, Robert the Ghost Kastner. Das Vidanya, motherfuckers. All right, round one, guys. You know what works? The whiteboard round. Andrew, and hit him with the rules for round number one. Yeah, sure. Um, it's the whiteboard round. All right, I'll tell you more. Uh, basically, uh, for each question, you're going to write down uh, your answer in 15 seconds. Uh, after that 15 seconds is up, you will not only show us your answer, you will also verbalize it. Uh, for each question that you get right, you get one point. If you don't get it right, don't worry about it. We're not going to penalize you for that yet. Um, and if you get all eight questions correctly, you will get a bonus question. And if you get that right, you will have a total of nine points at the end of this round. All right, uh, gentlemen, remember throughout the match you have three repeats and one challenge. Robert, are you ready? Yes. Joe, are you ready? I didn't think I'd get past testing, so let's do this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember, keep your hands up uh, throughout the match, guys. And starting with category number one, 
in the realm of the 1990s. Which actress starred opposite Harrison Ford in Six Days, Seven Nights? So I'm assuming that Six Days and Seven Nights is uh, the amount of time it takes before you go mad being locked in a room with me. I was going to say that's how long it takes for Harrison Ford to get injured on his movie set. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pins down. We'll start with Joe. Have a And Robert. Just remember, according to fanboys, Harrison Ford's never made a ba- bad movie. And <laughs> uh, Anne Hayes is correct. All right. And your next question is going to come in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's still around. All right. Your question is, what 2007 Ice Cube movie is a remake of a 1948 Cary Grant film? Uh, Cary Grant, what are your thoughts? Uh, Not somebody I think about along the same lines as Ice Cube a lot. Exactly. Cary Grant, hack. Ice Cube, Oscar winner. Legendary. Legend. Five, four, three, two. And I stand by that. One. Pens down. Clip that if you'd like. Uh, oh, we'll start with uh, Robert. Are we there yet? And Joe. Yeah, nothing. Uh, it's actually the sequel, Are We Done Yet? You were yeah. in the right realm there, Robert. It's Are We Done Yet? Which is a remake of Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House. That's right. Uh, moving on to category number three. Category of horror. Ah! We got one for every question. Uh, what is the first name of what is the first name of Ghostface's first victim in 1996's Scream? Ah, that's yeah, it's perfect. Ah, yeah. Yeah, well, you told us to do it. That's, that's actually the name of the movie. It's ah. <laughs> that would be a better title. How many H's that fit on the poster? Five. As much as you want. Four. Good. Three. Two. One pins down, and we will go to Joe. Couldn't remember, so I just went Drew. And Robert. Casey. Actually, his first victim was Steve. He killed Steve before he killed Casey. Oh, God. Man, I'm (sighs) doing this up terribly. That's right. right. Well, your next question is going to come in drama. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What is the profession of Morgan Freeman's Joe Clark in Lean on Me? This is based after the classic song, right? Yeah, this is the one with uh, Will Wheaton. Oh. uh, Corey Feldman, right? Oh, I love that movie. It's a great movie. Doesn't crack my top 100, but it's a great movie. Five. It should. Four. (laughs) Three. Two. One. Pins down. And we will start with Robert. High school principal. And Joe. If in doubt, go with Ryan. High school principal is correct. Damn it. I was waiting for you to tell me it wasn't a high school. (laughs) (laughs) Question number five in the category of classics. In To Kill a Mockingbird, how many children does Atticus Finch have? Andrew, have you ever killed a mockingbird? Be honest. I know we're not supposed to, but... I mean... Kind of the whole point of the book. When you're driving at night, you can't tell if you hit a mockingbird or a vulture. It was one of the two, Kirk. I can't tell. Me. I, I, like, yeah. have, you ever, have you ever gone set a Watchmen? Three, two, no. one. Literary deep cut pens down. And we will start with Joe. High school was a very long time ago, so I'll say three. And Robert. So two? Two is correct. Jeb and Scout. Yeah, I had remember Jim and Scout, and then I was like, is there a third? There was a third kid, but it wasn't Atticus. Not her. Yeah. Not it. Uh, your next question is going to come in... Quotes. In what 2010s film will you hear the line dread it, run from it, destiny arrives all the same? Destiny arrives same. all the same is the I'll give it to you once again. Dread it, run from it, destiny arrives all the same. You cut out there a little bit, Bar. So Bar, what is it? It was you, only a matter of time. What is it that you dread and run from? The ice cream man. Really? Terrifying. See, most people run. Are you talking about Clint Howard's The Ice Cream Man? For no, I'm talking about Jamie Kennedy three, from Max Keeble's Big Move. Two. Oh, you repeat? Uh, first repeat for uh, Robert. Go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead, home. Oh, that's right. Uh, categories quotes. In what 2010s film will you hear the line, dread it, run from it, 
Destiny arrives all the same. What about you, Kirk? What are you dreading run from? Clint Howard's ice cream, man. <laughs> Terrifying. Clint Howard in general. Well, yeah. That, yeah. Ooh, yeah, you know what? Five, you know what? If he's close by, it means four, Ron Howard's close by. And three, that means and I like Brian Michaels. Two. One. Pens down. And um, we're gonna start with Robert on this one. I didn't know. I said Blade Runner 2049. And Joe. I really wanted Robert to look behind him. Avengers Infinity War. Oh, Infinity Avengers War Infinity, Infinity War is correct. Joe, get on the board there. With and the your, ID question. Surprise, surprise. Your pen ultimate question coming in the category of biopics, or if you prefer bi- biopics. Who played Snoop Dogg in 2015's Straight Outta Compton? Oh, I had this before. You know, biopic is the correct word because biopics are glasses, and we are not talking about glasses trivia. I've never heard glasses referred to as biopics. There are types of glasses that are biopic. Bifocal? Are you thinking three, sure. two, one? Pens down. And uh, we'll start with Joe. I couldn't remember Simon Wood Harris. And Robert. I didn't know. I said Calvin Shep. Uh, correct answer is Lakeith Stanfield. I knew that as well. Oh my god, that's right. And your final question is going to come in plot summary because, you know, it's full metal. Your question is, or name the film from the following plot summary. A convicted rapist released from prison after serving a 14-year sentence stalks the family of the defense lawyer he holds responsible for putting him in jail. Ever good, good, good read there, Bar. <laughs> that that is the theatrical training. That's why I uh, gave you the evens. Yep, good. I don't know why Five, I became Scottish four, for a second. Three, two, one. Pins down, and uh, we'll start with Robert on this one. Cape Fear and Joe. Counselor Cape Fear. Cape Fear is correct. Ooh, ooh, I got the jitters after that. So at the end of a very challenging round number one, we have a score of Robert four and Joe falling behind with two. Uh, so we go now into round number two, which is the wheel round. Andrew, you want to hit him with the rules for round number two? Sure. It's the wheel round, uh, otherwise known as the round where the leading competitor will decide to go first or second, and the player who does go first will bet on either red or black. The wheel will be spun and will land on either a category or one of those two colors. If the color is spun, the competitor with the corresponding color will choose the category for themselves, or if their opponent lands on their color, they get to choose their opponent's category. However, if a category is spun, the competitor who uh, can choose to take that category or re-spin. If they re-spin, they will have to stick with whatever category that the wheel lands on. From the category, the competitor will receive Four questions worth two questions, uh, two points each, and uh, multiple choice is available though, reducing the point value to one. But uh, guys, just so you know, if you get it wrong, your opponent has the chance to steal. Uh, so you know, don't be criminals. We'll come after you, but uh, you could, you know, get more points. All right, guys, and your uh, categories on the wheel tonight are movie release dates, animation. Samuel L. Jackson, horror, recent releases, John Krasinski, action adventure, time travel movies, Robert's strength of post 80s sports comedies, and Joe's strength of James Bond. Of course, the color is red or black. Uh, we will bring uh, Anthony in and uh, Robert, since you're in the lead. Mm-hmm. Do you want to spin first or second? What are you thinking here? I mean, it's a pretty good wheel for you, so it's kind of really your choice. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. We can see if, I mean, honestly, I think there's not enough for you to really want off the wheel for him to go first. It's really it's really how you're feeling. It was a rough round one. You got a couple rough wrongs. that I was around. I, a couple of that I was around. Yeah, around. So uh, it really is your choice. How do you feel? I kind of want to let him go. Okay. Then just that's what we'll do. Okay. I just uh, right. we got all the rules for round two because there were a lot. So there I were a lot. I, 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 I passed out halfway through. My yeah, I did too. God, God damn. Uh, yeah, so we're going to differ. Okay. All right. So, Joe, since you'll be spinning first, do you want to choose the color of red or black? Black. All right. Joe will be black. Robert will be red. And uh, we'll bring the wheel up. And, Joe, here is your first spin. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, you're welcome. Animation. Stick with that or spin again. 
Yeah. See, I'm kind of in the same boat there. There's a lot on this wheel I like. There's just one or two things I'd rather not have. No, I'll stick with animation. All yeah. right, animation. Uh, Andrew, do you want to give uh, Joe his questions in the category of animation? Sure. Joe, are you ready for your first question in the animation? Sure. Great. You have no choice in the option uh, in the matter. So your first question. I, I could have said spin again, so you know. <laughs> well, I guess that's fair. Your first question. In Rango, what type of animal is the mayor of the town, voiced by Ned Beatty? Oh, Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, a tortoise, B, a snake, C, an owl, or D, an armadillo? Tortoise. That is correct for one point. Yeah, just needed the little joke. <laughs> Your next question. In what 2010s film will you find characters named Doug, Hognob, and Lord Nuth? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Trolls, B, Kubo and the Two Strings, C, Early Man, or D, Minions? With Early Man. For one more point? I've seen the others, and that's probably <laughs> <laughs> Your third question, in Beavis and Butthead Do America, what is stolen from them that sets their adventure in motion? Yeah, you just multiple choice that straight away. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, a car, B, a dirty magazine collection, C, a television, or D, bikes? <sighs> go with B. B is incorrect. Uh, Robert, your options again are A, car, B, dirty magazine collection, C, a television, or D, bikes. I believe, like the video game, it's uh, C, the television. Television is correct for one point. Ah, another guess. And your final question. Who voiced Ted Shackelford, a.k.a. the man in the yellow hat, in 2006's Curious George? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Steve Carell, B, Will Ferrell, C, Paul Rudd, or D, Stephen Colbert. Steve Carell. That is incorrect. Robert, your options again are A, Steve Carell, B, Will Ferrell, C, Paul Rudd, or D, Stephen Colbert. Mom, the meatloaf. We want it now, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell is correct for one point. All right. So after uh, Joe's spin, uh, Robert picking up a couple of spins, I have uh, Robert in the lead, uh, six to four. Is that what you have, Andrew? Uh, yes, that's what I have. Okay. So we will bring the Will back in. We will bring Anthony back in. And here is Robert's first spin. Spinny. Spinny, spin, spin. And it spins too. And you get Sam Jackson. You know, keep huh. that or you want to spin again? I, I like, like Joe said, there's a lot of stuff on here that you like, one or two that we'd rather not. Sam Jackson is in every movie ever made. Um, so I have uh, a lead. So I'm you thinking, have a lead. Yeah, I'm thinking there's probably one or two like I could probably get, but if not, I could probably. What do you think? Do you think I should spin again? And go? I, there is like two on here, especially one that you cannot hit. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I should, if you feel decent in this, you can multiple choice your way through and probably get a two and at least one or two. That's what I was thinking. I think I should keep it. I think so. Let's 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 stay away from James Bond. We all know yep. what we're saying here. Yep. Yeah, we I, all know what we're saying. Uh, so I'm going to take Sam Jackson. All right. We're going to stay with Sam Jackson. Uh, Robert, you ready for your first question? Indeed. Let's go. Who directed Deep Blue Sea? Rennie Harlan. That is correct for two points. Question number two. In Jumper, what is the name of the Jumper hunting, hunting secret society that Jackson's character is a member of? Paladins? That is correct for two points. Uh, question number three. In what film did Sam Jackson appear alongside both Margot Robbie and Christoph Waltz? Five, four, three. I'm going to multiple choice. 
Okay, multiple choice. Is it A, The Muppets Most Wanted, B, The Legend of Tarzan, C, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, or D, Horrible Bosses 2? I just needed the notes because there's so many so many Sam Jackson movies. It's uh, <laughs> The Legend of Tarzan. That is correct for one point. Gosh, and, and your final question. What is the profession of Samuel L. Jackson's character, Mitch, in The Long Kiss Goodnight? Oh, man. It's been so long. Uh, I'm going to multiple choice this one. Okay, is it A, police detective, B, pimp, C, bail bondsman, or D, private investigator? I'm going to say a bail bondsman. That is incorrect. Uh, Joe, for the one point still, is it A, police detective, B, pimp, C, bail bondsman, or D, private investigator? No, D, private investigator. That is correct for the one point still. So closing out round number two, I have scored Robert lead with... 11 and Joe with five. Andrew, can you yep. confirm? Okay. Yep. All no, right. Much to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to round number three is our deep cut round. Andrew, you want to hit him with the rules for round number three? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me scroll down to those real quick. Uh, you're okay. Your round three rules are there will be one question worth two points and two questions worth four points each. There is no multiple choice available, but lucky for you guys, there's no ceiling either. We will be spun to determine the movie for each question, and players will have the option to respin only one time, so you know, choose wisely. If a movie has no questions remaining for a, perspe- uh, for a perspective point value, the player that lands on it will get a technical respin. The player behind will start answering questions first. Once that player ties or moves ahead of their opponent, the other player will get their first question. On the first four-point spin, uh, the player will get the first four-point question, and then on the second four-point spin, they will get the second four-point question. Each player will go back and forth, answering their questions until the player is mathematically eliminated. And your movies for this match are The Untouchables, The Dead Don't Die, The Skin I Live In, Instant Family, Fargo, Remember the Titans, Long Shot, Back to the Future, Part Two. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good list. <laughs> All solid right, list of movies. Well, okay, okay Joe. Well, you're gonna get a chance to answer some questions since you're behind. You are gonna get to go first. So let's bring up that round three. Will. Oop. There it is. And remember, uh, Joe, you do have one respin for the round. So here is your first two point spin. All right, Fargo, you want to keep that, or would you like to spin again? Oh, yeah, we'll keep that. Okay. Fargo. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you did that, eh? <laughs> All right, I'll give give Joe his round three questions. Uh, for two points, Joe, who plays Norm? Oh, Five. Four, three, repeat. Two. Okay, Joe's first repeat. For two points in Fargo, who plays Norm? God damn, I'm blanking. His name's gone. Four, three, two. One. Can't pull it. Okay, it is John Carroll Lynch. Or Twisty the Clown, if you watch American Horror Story. <laughs> All right, so um, now, Joe, we're going to move on to your first four-point spin. So, let's we'll catch up here. Uh, some points to earn. Got to hit this one. Here is your first four-point spin. Sorry. No, you're fine. And it is Fargo again. And just as, as you're, you're correct, you do have to hit both of these to uh, send it back over to Robert. So do you want to take Fargo for four or do you want to spin again? I'll take it for four. Okay. Your four-point question. According to Mike, how did his supposed ex-wife Linda die? Leukemia. That is correct for four points. Now it comes down to this. 
your last four point spin have to hit this to send it back to Robert and avoid the TKO. Back to the future part two. From your action, I'm assuming you want to keep this? Yes, please. All right. Okay, back to future part two. What is the final score of the game 2015 Biff plays on the radio for 1955 Biff to prove the Gray Sports Almanac is for real? UCLA 19, Washington 17. Even gives teams. That is correct for four points. Impressive. Avoiding the TKO. It's an IG movie. At least I got them done. <laughs> yeah. Avoiding the TKO and sending it back over to Robert. Mm-hmm. Bring the wheel back up for Robert's. Nice work, Joe. Two pointer. Long shot. You want to keep that for two? You want to spin again? I'm cool with that. Yeah, I think this is going. You just hit this, and you just hit one of the next two. So, yep. Yep. Keep Keep it. All right, Andrews, to you. All right, Robert, you ready for your two point question in long shot? Yep. Great. Who plays Prime Minister of Canada, James Stewart? Alexander Skarsgård. For two points. Two points and tying it up. Now, uh, Robert just has to hit one of his four pointers uh, to win. If he misses them both, we will go to sudden death. But here is his uh, first four point spin. You are not going to sudden death again. No. <laughs> Don't do it to me. And you take it easy on that arm. Full Metal doesn't offer any kind of insurance program. Long shot again. Would you like to keep this or uh, spin again on that? I'll probably just take it, and then we could do the respin on the last one. Yeah, so I, yeah, keep this. and probably seen it recently, so, and then use the respin on the last one if you don't feel great about it. So keep it. Okay, yeah, we'll keep it. <clears throat> Robert, your, fir- your, your four-point question in long shot. How many Golden Globe nominations does President Chambers have? Well, you know he must be convincing if he has six Golden Globe nominations. And your winner, Robert the Ghost Kastner. All right, that was a uh, very fought, well-fought match by both competitors. Uh, we'll go to post-match interviews now. Uh, we're going to start with Joe. Uh, Joe, it was a valiant effort. Uh, it was a tough round one. Uh, you guys both kind of struggled. Uh, round two, I think it was just, you know, he had more questions in his wheelhouse. Uh, you did what you could in round number three. Uh, what are your overall thoughts on the match? Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. Like I said, that round one was tough, typically hitting the IG question. And I love Cape Fear, so that wasn't a that was a that that, that was a nice question for me <laughs> in plot summary. I don't I don't do too badly in those. But I like with the the IG one quotes, they usually come from the trailer, so that's always <laughs> handy. Um but yeah, the, the round two, the round two, I say so I've been working hard on animation, but it's been, you know, it's been Disney, DreamWorks and the animated geek movies, um, unfortunately, none of those were in, th- were in this. Um, so I had to multiple choice my way through it, which it is what it is. Samuel L. Jackson round probably would have done better if I had respun, but I'm not too bothered. Like I said, I've come into singles, not really expecting to even get past testing. So to come in 2-0 and and to leave the road to the tournament with a 2 and one record to a player like Robert is nothing to be concerned about, especially when I missed that two point up in round three, I'm thinking, Oh, we're going towards TKO here, but it was just that one cast member's name that escaped me. Plot detail was fine. And then hit the IG movie for the last one. So the wheel was not unkind to me. Could have been a slightly kinder, but only in round two. So I'm not, I'm not too disappointed. I'm coming out with a two and one record and I'll be back. Absolutely. Took the words right out of my mouth. Two and one. Uh, you'll still be in the mix of things once the uh, the, the title uh, picture is over here. Um, anybody you want to play or anything you're hoping to accomplish uh, once you get back into it? Uh, not really. I always say that I like to get out of round one 50%, so four, not two. But when a player like Robert's only getting four, then I can settle for two and not be too disappointed. And I'll, I'll play anyone because it's singles. I enjoy it. It's where I come to have the fun. It's not where I come to sort of really challenge myself and challenge for titles like I plan to do in other divisions. Absolutely. Well, thank you for playing. It's a pleasure to have you. Well, Always well great to have you on call. Well, and um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's go to our winner for today. Uh, Robert Kastner, 
Uh, Robert, like I said, it was kind of a grind starting out for everybody, but uh, you pulled it out. Uh, what are your real thoughts? Yeah, uh, round one's not been kind to me lately in a lot of things, uh, and it stinks that I was, you know, around two answers, so I could have been up four and and maybe put this away and been a TKO. But uh, Joe fought hard uh, when he missed the two pointer. I was unsure if he would get the four pointers, but there's a difference, you know, in logging your brain for the sake of knowing cast and and data like that versus knowing plot points. So I understand it given how the notes and how stressed I was about cast from the skin I live in, which apparently I would have been just fine. Uh, no, it feels good. Uh, Samuel Jackson worked out. I was happy to get five points off that, you know, uh, and uh, in three full metal matches, I haven't missed around three questions. So I hold by what I had said after the first match against Ryan. I think if I'm close in a th round three match, I'm not going to miss any points. Yeah. Very true. You haven't yet. You've done great. Uh, you, that round walk was brutal. Uh, yeah. That was rough. And being yeah. around questions is rough. I was glad you came out of that into round mm -hmm. two without being down about being so close on two of them. But no. you played great. Joe really fought that hard in round three. As soon as I saw Back to the Future 2, I'm like, okay, be ready to answer some questions because there's no chance in hell he misses this. Uh, but Joe played great. You played just that bit better to get it. Round two, Samuel Jackson, glad we stayed. Because if that spin, spun again and went to the bond, could have been a little more interesting. Yes. But, uh, no, let's just let's keep moving on. Let's keep going down this path and uh, to the contenders. All right. Uh, yeah, your next match uh, in, on the road to the title, you're going to be taking on Adelaide Spence. Uh, Spence oh. starting the season off with two uh, TKO win and a KO win. So, impressive record. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts going into uh, that next match against Spence? Well, uh, he is a member of the family, fun DMC family. So uh, it's great because it's gravy either way. Uh, I've never got to play Spence in anything, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, yeah, he's been impressive in the matches I've seen, uh, especially this season. So it will be not easy for me. I just got to hope that it's one of, another one of those things. If I have a lead in round three, I probably feel pretty good about it. All right. I'm well, the manager of both. I plead the fifth. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You don't get off that easy. No. Yeah, no. yeah. I can shut the fuck up. I'm done. All I will right. find your house. Well, uh, Robert, thank you. Congratulations on the win. Uh, congratulations on moving forward. And um, we'll see you again very soon. Good. All right, Andrew, what are your thoughts on our first match on the road to the title and Brian Michaels? Um. You know, a slow start, but this is a match that picked up a lot of steam as it went through. Um, unfortunately, sometimes, like, you dance around a question, whether it's, like, just not the right wording, or you just, you know the face, you can't pull it. Uh, and that was the deciding factor today, but doesn't mean that either of these two players weren't really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it was just a struggle round one. Sometimes that happens, but uh, round two, Joe's got nothing to hang his head about. Um, he just got, like, he said some stuff outside of his wheelhouse. Ro uh, Robert hit a strong category for him, and, um, it, or at least questions for him. So, and Robert played great in uh, round three, like he said. So, uh, both players doing well. Joe, we'll see you again. Uh, but Robert, like I said, he's got Spence coming up, and that'll be next round. And until then, uh, thank you all for watching. For uh, Robert, for Anthony, for Joe, for Andrew James Barr, I'm Kirk the Conciliary Kolkowski. We'll see you again soon.